Hi everyone, this is Angela here, and today I'm doing part two of uh, my video, I wonder if my mother is merely a narcissist or is she a psychopath. Um, this is something that I really didn't understood, understand, excuse me, um, I didn't understand what a psychopath or a sociopath is, you know, so I was kind of having trouble with that aspect of mental illness and um, I purposely came on YouTube this morning to give a special thank you to one of the commenters um, in my last video and this person's name is uh, Dodge Blake and Dodge I just wanted to thank you I 100% agree with what you wrote in the comment section and I just came on YouTube because it just pinpointed what this is, who my mother is, what the dynamic is of her personality disorder based on the information that I shared in my videos. And I want to share with everyone what Blake had to say um, so that we could all learn from, from my mother's personality disorder as I have learned from other people's stories. You know, I mean, it's been a tremendous, tremendous healing journey for me to uh, watch other narcissistic survivor videos and to hear their stories, to hear their experiences, and um, to realize that I'm not alone out here and that the world is a lot different than what, you know, I believed it to be because for many years I always thought that I was like an alien in an abnormal world where the world was a lot different from my world if that makes any sense okay so getting on to uh, Dodge Blake's comment I'm going to read it here and um, just so you know what it says okay and Dodge says um, I'm going to, what I'm going to say is based on what I know and about my thinking on your mother. Okay. Um, yes, both the psychopath and the sociopath have the same illness, antisocial personality disorder. The psychopath is born ill, ill psyche. The sociopath is made ill by his abusive social environment, ill social conditions. Okay. They can both physically assault people and one of the symptoms is that they like to physically torture animals and people. Okay, I'm going to stop here with this comment and, and I have to say that my mother was not a person that tortured animals. So that was a good point. Okay, I'm continuing on now. The psychopath can plan his moves so he's never caught and he can appear in, as normal in society. The sociopath is more careless, he doesn't plan straight, and he gets caught more often because his crimes are more overt. Here's the thing, while the histrionic and the narcissist need attention to live, the antisocials couldn't care less about supply. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. And that's a very good point that I never thought of, okay? Continuing on. It doesn't fit. Because maybe your mother is not psychopathic or sociopathic. It's tricky because her cruelty, physical assault looks antisocial, but it's her need for supply, both in the histrionic and narcissistic manner, that makes me believe that she's not antisocial. And even if she has antisocial co comorbidity, it's not that significant. All her cruelty has a motivation, supply, and narcissists can also be passive aggressive. Hint, the roach in the spaghetti. She bit you, yes, but it was only once, and it would it shows it just shows hostility, which narcs have a lot. Biting is also so immature. Many children act in this way. That it's also a sign of narcissism. Also, if we are not supplied to narcissists 
or if we have no more use for them, they tend to ignore us like we never existed. This is also a very narcissistic trait. Good point. Saying that she wished you've never been born sounds like an extreme way to get pity from others and to feel better, superior after getting narcissistically injured. This is all narcissistic supply. Another good point. So it's because her cruelty is motivated by the need for attention and admiration and perfect supply that I think your mother is not a, so a psychopath or a sociopath. I have to I, I have to agree with this. I have to agree with this. Okay, continuing on. But she could well enlist someone with antisocial tendencies to do some work for her, and that's what she did with Tito. Tito wanted something from her, money slash house. She also wanted supply from him. You were in the way of their interests. Your mother ignored your existence because you were not a supply for her. She thought, well, I'll let Tito remove her from our path because I don't care. She's not supplied for me, but Tito is, okay? They would both benefit from your harm. Excellent point. Another thing I forgot to say, your mother needed to have children so she could appear normal in society and get supply, but it was all appearance. She was mean to you because... In the intimacy of the home, you removed her supply from her. She was in a double bind situation with you. She was trapped and she needed to remove you in a way that would make you appear as the quote unquote wrong one. She and Tito wanted to fabricate your quote unquote badness to have an excuse to remove you. And she never paid attention to children and to her children's needs because she was envious. As you know, histrionics and narcs want all the attention for themselves. Hope this helps you think more. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so spot on. It makes absolutely perfect sense. My mother, okay, my mother is definitely histrionic. She always had to be the center of attention and she always had and as I read in an article concerning histrionic personality disorder, when I talk about the symptoms of histrionic personality disorder in my last, in, in my video, um, in-depth conversation about histrionic personality disorder, one of the, one of the symptoms of histrionic personality disorder is the princess role. Okay. My mother always had everybody doing things for her and she knew how to manipulate her environment to get people to behave this way and how that happens is okay and I and I commented in the thread back on my last video to explain this how that happens is okay I had said in another video that my mother used to wait until we were just ready getting getting ready to go to school to wash her clothes so our school uniforms, because at that time when I was a small child, I went to a Catholic school. Okay, so I'm about eight years old at the time that I remember this, okay? That, you know, around those years between six, seven, eight, um, my mother used to wait right until that moment when it was time to go to school to wash the school uniforms, and they would be wet. Okay, so as a result, we used to go to school with wet clothes, okay? They were either dirty and not washed at all, or they were wet to the point where it would be freezing cold and wearing wet clothes. So as a result, it forced me to um, learn how to wash clothes at a much younger age than probably most other children who had that that taken care of for them okay and um you know another thing like the like I want to explain why I I titled my video wicked attraction I believe I said it before but I said but I'll say it again 
the TV show Wicked Attraction that's shown on, you know, either True TV or Investigative Discovery Channel or, you know, depending on where you live, I don't know if you get these channels, but there is a TV show called Wicked Attraction. And one of the parties in the Wicked Attraction, they always involve two people. And on, on like 90% of the stories, or maybe it could be lower, it would usually be one of the parties did not have a criminal record and would not have went on these crime sprees had they not hooked up with the other person. Okay? And that basically was my mother. My mother did many, a lot, quite a few things that my mother did that were extremely evil. Okay? Were a result of something that someone else engineered. And that was basically someone who was at one point or time in her life part of her supply. And I want to give you all another example. And I had talked this over with a friend of mine yesterday because this, it, it triggered a memory of some of the sadistic things that my mother got involved with. And she really laughed and, and thought it was funny, but it was not funny. Okay. This one was really quite serious, and it was a criminal offense that she never got caught. Um, back in the late 1970s, early 1980s, I would say somewhere between 79 and 81, um, my mother used to work with, with a woman, okay? And this lady was a real jokester. Um, and her jokes were not really funny. They were quite crude. And um, my mother had purchased a stove with a microwave attached, and it was quite expensive, and she bought it on credit. And my mother kind of got herself into, like, a financial hole because, you know, she wasn't making the payments on time. She was making the payments, but she wasn't making them on time. So this creditor had called uh, would call her and remind her, I guess maybe a week before the payment was due, that the pay payment was due. And um, according to my mother, this person was harassing her. Okay, now I didn't hear the conversation between my mother and this creditor, but I'm just telling you the story as I understand it. Okay? So, my mother had, you know, told this woman that she worked with about the harassment, about this guy, this creditor, and the stove, okay? So the guy happened to be Jewish because he had a Jewish last name. And um, so my mother, so this woman en engineers this joke, and they get a piece of cardboard that's like a 5 by 7 and they draw this big swastika on this piece of cardboard, and they mail it directly to this guy. And that's a hate crime, okay? Um, my, they were both laughing about it. They thought it was funny. But I don't think that was really funny. And basically, um, if I was a Jewish person and I got, I got a swastika in the mail like that, I would um, be very, very frightened of that, Okay. I mean, what the, what the Nazis did was no laughing matter. And, um, you know, and looking back on this memory as an adult, it was very cruel and sadistic. But the point is, you see how my mother didn't come up with this idea on her own, but she always catered to bad people, okay? And my grandmother had even told her, her mother-in-law, she used to say, Joanne, you cater to the wrong people. Um, my mother, in the past, back in the 1970s, I explained where she had hooked up with this other neighbor, this woman, who was really a bad influence on her. Um, my mother used to, this woman was very carefree, um, irresponsible, and didn't take into consideration that my mother had three small children and she wanted to go out and go bowling and do things and 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 live a lifestyle that was more appropriate for like a single person. Now I was very young back in those days, okay? So I don't really remember the um details of their relationship so much, 
But I, w I do remember my father constantly complaining and fighting with my mother about her associating with this person who basically caused a lot of trouble. My grandmother and my, my grand, my grandparents and my father and mother used to be neighbors. They used to live like two doors down. And what had happened was because my grandparents lived so close, my grandmother used to keep my mother structured and be like, you know, the baby needs a bath, you need to start dinner, you know, but my mother found this to be quite intrusive, you know, even though my grandmother's intentions were, were really justifiable because the way my mother acted, um, got quite a few complaints and, and visits from the child, children's protective services, okay? So my grandmother was trying to get my mother to do the right things so that the children wouldn't be taken away. But my mother didn't see it that way. And this neighbor had ordered um, my grandmother to get it like, like you know, you need to leave Joanne alone and, and, and basically cause some trouble. So my mother's like, yeah, you need to get out of my house and like, you know, by, by herself, my mother wasn't doing these things, but after she hooked up with this neighbor who caused trouble, then, you know, that's what happened. But let me just tell you what happened to that neighbor, okay? Um, the neighbor happened to be a drug addict, okay? She was a pill popper and a pot smoker, and uh, one day we found out that um, she died from a drug overdose. So that's the people that, that's another example of a bad person that my mother chose to associate with. There was another woman, her name was Marie, and my mom used to, you know, be be friends with her, pal around with her, and basically just, you know, did goofy stuff. And, um, you know, Marie robbed her house, okay? I know she did because she knew she knew personal stuff that my mother had and she was the only one in the house and basically stuff was missing and allegedly she robbed the house. So, you know, part of the symptoms of histrionic personality disorder is that the histrionic is extremely suggestible, extremely gullible. Another thing that I want to point out about histrionic personality disorder is the fact that not all his, people that, not all women that are histrionic personality dress sexually seductive, okay? My mother did not dress sexually seductive, probably because my mother was very covert in her narcissism and histrionics, and to be sexual, to dress that way would expose her to my father that she was cheating on him, and she always cheated on him. Always. There was always a man around. And things were getting paid for, and they weren't being paid for by my father's salary, okay? And that's a whole nother story. But the purpose of this video is to talk about how I'm trying to understand what has happened to me and my siblings, and to understand my mother's mental illness and, and what the hell this is because it doesn't make any sense for people to do these things. It doesn't make any sense. But having that comment put shed some significant light on my journey with my narcissistic mother and I and I just wanted to come on YouTube and give a special thank you to this person. Um so it, so YouTube has been a very welcoming and healing journey in my recovery. And I hope that my videos have also helped other people. Because not every, everybody's journey with their narcissist is, a, is the same. Because most narcissists, if not all narcissists, have one of the other personality disorders. They are either an antisocial, a borderline, or a histrionic. And it doesn't matter which one of the other personality disorders they have. All highly toxic. It's like comparing strychnine, cyanide, and arsenic. You know, different type of poison, all equally lethal. And um, so that's, so I'm going to stop this video. And um, 
once again I want to say thank you oh but before I stop the video I wanted to just mention that I changed the picture I took that picture of that demon off because I just felt it was too scary it's really a scary demon and it doesn't fit I didn't think it fit because my mother was not a scary person she was not like this you know on on appearance and it, it was just she's so clever um she's not very intelligent okay she's not college educated and, but she's very clever because she knew how to manipulate people and um she was extremely good at it so with that said i'm going to stop the video and once again I appreciate your feedback and say thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care.